your accent is sort of like a good body. It's the exterior. It's the it's the appearance. What's up, guys? Another day, another video. So today I wanted to talk about accents, accents, accents when you're learning a language. Very cool topic, right? This is something that I've thought about recently. I thought about a lot, especially while learning Mandarin Chinese. It's something that. For for a long time, I've always tried to really be very particular about. You know, ever since learning Mandarin Chinese, I've always tried. It's always been higher up on my priority list to have a really good accent, and I really prided myself on having, on wanting to have a very good accent, on very, wanting to have a very like standard accent or a very Belgian the accent, um, an accent. <laughs> um, and and so, it's a, it's an area where I've focused a lot of attention on, and not that it's been a bad thing, but、uh, it's it's something that I've been thinking more and more of.、Um, I definitely think having a standard or having a an accent that、uh, is understandable, is intelligible, is definitely good. I think working on, especially with Mandarin Chinese, working on your pronunciation, working on your tones. Uh, whether it's the four tones, whether it's the the you know the different the the different pronunciations in in Mandarin Chinese is definitely very important. You know, for me,、uh, and I, I think for a lot of English speakers, there are some difficult aspects. For example, like the Z H versus Z,、uh, Z. I don't even know like the retro. They call it retroflex. Um, uh, retroflex tones or pronunciations. Anyways,、uh, for example, that there's other ones,、um, but there are certain aspects of the language of Mandarin Chinese that make it a little bit more difficult. And so th- these are areas where, in the past, I've focused on particularly just trying to really drill down and try to really sound more like a native speaker. And、uh, and I think that what is the point of this video? I, I think I want to say that the more I'm studying Mandarin Chinese, the more I'm being more tolerant to different types of accents. I don't know why. I think a lot. I think maybe because when I first started learning Mandarin Chinese, I was watching a lot of other language-related YouTube videos, and a lot of them. Whether it's with Mandarin Chinese, but there seems to be, or other or other languages, there seems to be an obsession, or not, just an overemphasis on really trying to get like the perfect accent, like sounding like a, a native speaker. And so, for a long time, that's what I wanted. But as I'm learning more and more, I'm becoming more tolerant to being okay with my particular accents, my unique accents, and and、um, you know the. The foreigner accent, or、um, because at the end of the day, an accent is just—it's unique. It's—it's a—it's a represent—it's a representation of where you grew up or where you learned your language. Like for example, people who grew up in Taiwan are going to have a Taiwanese accent. People who grew up in mainland China, depending on their local area, they're going to have their their accents are going to be influenced by the local dialect, and so. A lot of times, I would be maybe ashamed of my accent,、um, whether it's like a foreigner accent, or for example, if I'm living in Taiwan, I remember distinctly when I first came here because I was learning a little bit more of a standard mainland accent before I came to Taiwan. You know, those were the videos I was watching, and and some Taiwanese people would say to me, "Oh, your your accent sounds more mainland," or and and at that time. I was a little bit more self-conscious. I would think, ah,、oh, dang,、uh, yeah. I don't.、Uh, I would. I would try to like defend myself or or、uh, say something like, oh, you know, I, I. That's that's the material that I used to、uh, that I consumed. And then as I'm learning more in Mandarin, oh, sorry, learning more in Taiwan, my Mandarin Chinese is a little bit more of a has more of a Taiwanese accent. And then some people. When I do live streams, they'll say, "Oh, you have more of a Taiwanese accent."、Um, and then sometimes I'll get 
self-conscious or think like, you know, I should, I should have more of a, a mainland accent. I don't know. Um, the point is that I think everyone has their own opinion. Uh, while in Taiwan, I've had people tell me I've had a, a mainland accent. I've had people tell me I had a Beijing accent, which is surprising. Uh, definitely don't think that. But, you know, some people say that I have a, a Cantonese accent. Some people think that I have a foreigner accent. I've had that recently um, while I was going, buying stuff, doing some groceries. I've had people tell me that my accent sounds Taiwanese. So everyone has their own opinion. Everyone has their own thoughts on what your accent sounds like. Even native speakers can't, you know, pinpoint or can't conclusively decide on what type of accent the person has. And at the end of the day, I, I don't think it really matters that much. As long as you're communicating, at least I think, as long as you're communicating what you want, I think the accent is sort of like a flare. It's sort of like, I thought about this recently where I was like thinking, your accent is sort of, it's sort of like when you're working out and your accent is sort of like a good body. It's the exterior. It's the, it's the appearance. And so if you have a very good accent, if you have a very like standard accent, then you're, you have a body that looks really good. But there's so many other things that you can do with your body. Um, and I would much rather, instead of being concerned so much about my accent and how it, and how it sounds and fitting a certain accent, I would be so much more interested in what I have to say, the substance of the language, right? Um, I think about like when I, when I listen to English speakers who are not native speakers, like for example, there's this great example that I think about all the time, Esther Perel. I don't know if you guys know Esther Perel. She's a, a very, very talented, like, I don't know, is she an author? She's a, I think she's a counselor, like a relationship counselor. And her accent is very unique. It's very, definitely not native, like American or Canadian accent. It's, it has a, a European sort of accent to it, but I can't even remember what her mother tongue was, but she grew up speaking multiple different languages. So a lot of people don't even know what type of accent she has. But if you hear her accent, if you hear one of her TED Talks, which is very, very famous. You should definitely check it out. There's a TED Talk about relationships. And anyways, she, oh, I remember watching that video and being and noticing the accent, but it was never affecting my ability to interpret what she was saying. Like I was much more interested in what she was saying because it was so interesting. And so when I think about accents, I think like accents are cool. They're They're a part of you. They bring out you know, a certain flair, they're unique, they show your personality a little bit, they show your background. But I think it's sort of like the exterior, the appearance, the the packaging, the the packaging for what is the substance of what you're actually talking about. I think that substance is so much more important. Like if you have something to say, I'd much rather cultivate that. I'd much rather cultivate having something interesting to say. Um, so... Anyways, um, all to say that I think that I've been thinking a lot about accents. I think, I think focusing on trying to have like a good accent is, is great. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great goal. It's like working out, but I think I also want to be focusing on what I can do with my body, you know, playing sports, uh, climbing, you know, hiking, going, doing physical activity, what, like functionally. And I think that's akin to sort of the substance of what you're, what you're talking about. So accents are definitely important. I think they're important to you if you think it's important, but I think it's important also not to place too much emphasis on it if you're just using it as a way to conform to others or to please others because everyone is going to have their own opinion even native speaker even native speakers can't like put you into conclusively put you into their own box like they all have their own opinions everyone has their own opinions about what your accent is going to sound like and they're going to put labels on 
you know, you're because you sound like this, thus, this, 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 but you don't have to, you don't have to give yourself that baggage, right? And so for me, I'm going to, I'm going to still focus on my accent. I'm still going to try to improve it, make it sound uh, nice, you know, whatever that means to you. I'm still going to enjoy, you know, practicing my pronunciation. This is the other point. I think sometimes also people, they, because of the, the judgments and maybe the labels that native speakers or other people say about your accent, like you may be uh, ashamed to try more or to express yourself more or to practice your pronunciation or to try to pick a particular accent. Like, I think there's nothing wrong with saying, oh, I like the mainland accent or I'm more intrigued by it more. I'm more interested in more. And then you want to cater to that accent more. You want to practice that accent more or saying you like the Taiwanese accent more and like you want to practice that accent more. I think that's totally fine. Like there's no, you don't need to have some political agenda or some label that's saying like, you know, because you, you like this accent, like therefore thus, thus doesn't matter whatever accent you like. I mean, most of us go into learning languages because you like the sound of the language. At least for me, I like the musicality, the sound, how it sounds. Like that's a big reason why I learned, why I started to learn Mandarin Chinese. And so, and this is going to change. That's like, it, if it changes while you're learning, like say, you know, you like a certain accents in the beginning, but then you like a certain, another accent later on, like that's totally fine. The point is just do whatever you like. Don't worry too much about what other people think. And I think for me, that's that's something that I need to work on. And also I need to, I think I want to focus on accents. You know, I want to enjoy speaking in uh, certain accents, practicing my pronunciation, but also want to focus on what I can do with that language. How do I play with the language? What can I say with the language. I think that's so much more interesting. If I have something of substance that I can say is so much more important than the actual accent. So um, just some thoughts that I had recently about accents while learning a language. Let me know if you guys have similar ideas or if you guys have thought about accents. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. See you guys next time.